Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Uh, 78 and uh, we have been working with orbit determination problem. So, in that context I showed you how to get the correction in the initial state. Okay. Now, if I will return back to that again and uh, that was particularly for one observation I have shown, but we have multiple observations in that case how do we do it. So, let us go to that. So, see uh, the same equation, the linearized equation I have shown here in this place. So, this is delta y j. Okay. So, the, this is also we called as the observation residual and this is called the state residual. And this is your noise vector. Okay. And we have casted it in this format. Okay. Now, if we have multiple observation, so this error v j which is appearing here, this must be minimized over all the observation. So, we are making from 1 to total number of n observation. So, I have here summed them up. Okay, I have taken a summation of this over the n number of observation. So, I can put here it in this format. Okay. Till this, this is okay. Now, again if we differentiate it, you can check or either you can refer to some book on linear algebra. Okay. So, if you differentiate it, it can be casted here in this format. If this is from the previous only. So, by putting it differentiating it like this and this two factor comes because there are two similar factors present here. Okay. So, it will come here in this format. So, this is in the transpose format okay. and if you take the transpose of this, so, this you can reduce it to this format. So, from here our work starts. Now, the summation j equal to n b j transpose b j times delta x tilde 0, this quantity will be equal to b j transpose b j transpose times delta x b j transpose times delta y tilde and then summation j equal to 1 to capital N and with j here the subscript j is present in delta y j. Now, look back here in this equation. So, we got it in the same format. This together it is a summation. Okay. Summation is present. Okay. B transpose z, B transpose B times alpha 0. So, we have got it in the same format. But for because this summation sign is there, so we need to put it in a proper format so that we can work it out. Delta x 0 is separately, because delta x 0 is common. Okay, as you can see this is uh, at the initial state only and therefore, this can be taken as a common here in this place. So, multiply these two matrices, sum it up over all the observation and similarly, you have the matrix here whose summation is required and then this can be worked out. So, therefore, delta x tilde 0 this will be equal to summation b j transpose b j j equal to 1 to n this inverse and then you have to write for this matrix and this matrix can be summarized as 
you can write here in this format B J transpose times so summation this will be B J transpose times delta uh, or let us say we expand it and write it here. One times delta y one b two. These are at different time instants. So uh, okay, t equal to t zero. It corresponds to y one. Okay, and therefore, otherwise uh, I need to put here 0. So, th that I am not doing. So, in number observ observation T 0 corresponds to y 1 this you should remember. So, B 2 times delta y 2 and so on and remember these are vectors. Okay. You just need to uh, separate it out. So, this quantity can be written as V 1 transpose B 2 transpose B n transpose and then here it comes as delta y 1 tilde delta y 2 tilde and delta y n tilde. So, here from here to here this makes a 4 into 1 vector again this is 4 into 1 vector ok in the same way. So, if you actually code it on the computer, so it is a very easy to do, you do not have to worry so much. In the coding, in the mathematics it may appear very complex, but once you code it, it becomes easy. So, this is the correction to be given. So, you have made in number of observation, then you give correction to x tilde 0. So, this x tilde 0, after the first iteration I will write it like this after the first iteration this gets reduced to x tilde 0 plus delta x tilde 0 1 and continue with this. So, if you do this estimation step a few number of times then you will see that your system has conserved uh, uh, your system has converged okay. and how do we know that it has converged? You can keep estimating this error we see nothing but the observation residual of uh, you can keep estimating uh, or uh, either it is a better not observe observation residual we have written as this quantity. So, you can look for initially what the value of this E was and later on how it is a converging. So, the smaller this quantity becomes the better your estimate will be. Okay, and after certain tolerance limit you can stop the iteration. Okay, so, uh, this is the process of uh, estimation, but uh, few of the things we are still left with that I will complete now. We have to get the measurement equations measurement this we have not done ok. Measurement equation is required and its linearization is also required. So, how do we get all of them? See so, uh, our earth is little flattened from here to here let us say this distance is a and a this is called the equatorial radius equatorial radius and on the pole it is a flattened. You may be situated somewhere here. So, this is tangent to this and if we draw a perpendicular at this point. So, it will come to this point and this will angle we can write as phi. Okay. 
and this we call as the geodetic latitude okay. phi this we call as geodetic latitude from here to here if we connect and let us say this we write as phi c phi c this is called the geocentric latitude thereafter it may happen that uh, your uh, this uh, ground station it's uh, not just located uh, on the surface of the earth but rather it's uh, located somewhere at certain height okay so if it is located at certain height so for that also the correction has to be given so flattening of the earth if it's a defined as let us say this quantity we write as b this is the polar radius okay so this can be written as 1 minus 1 minus e a square under root where f is defined as a minus b divided by a so you can reduce it uh, already you know that what is the minor axis so this is ellipsoidal shape and this is the ground station in that plane okay this is basically appearing as a ellipse okay and this is the center of the ellipse and the, this is not the focus okay remember this is not the focus this is perpendicular dropped from perpendicular at this point at the ground station if you draw so it cuts somewhere the horizontal axis and this point the angle that it makes we are calling this as the geodetic latitude so the e a square this is related to this by 2f minus f a square so th there is a book on orbit determination by pedro ramen escoval pedro pedro ramen escoval so it's a old book but it gives you all those description also you can look into the valado this is the second book where you can look for some of these descriptions but this is very nicely described and uh, the third book uh, on this may be uh, by taple the statistical orbit determination by taple taple so these three authors pedro ramon escoval valado david valado and taple So if you refer to this book, so you will get some of these things listed there. So now, if this is called flattening of Earth, flattening of Earth, and it's important to take into account all these things because uh, if you take a wrong value of the radius, then uh, your the result will get affected seriously so let us say uh, this quantity already we have chosen as a the distance from this place to this place up to this place this distance we write as bc this is bc and the distance from this place to this place this is the horizontal distance we write as ac so therefore if you look here in this place ac and bc it can be written here and uh, for that you have the equation ac equal to the, these are some of the details which i am not able to uh, tell you here because uh, those many details cannot be accommodated in so much of a small lecture okay so this is your phi c so this is a cos phi divided by 1 minus e a square sin a square phi under root and bc equal to a times 1 minus e a square and sin phi
So, AC and BC is known. So, what will be the coordinate of this ground station in the uh, say uh, your uh, in the earth fixed system ok in the terrestrial reference frame what will be the coordinate of ground station this is what we are looking for. So, finding coordinates of ground station in ITRF international terrestrial reference frame. So, ACBC is known now if you look into the figure like this. So, here this is your ground station. So, this quantity is your B c and this quantity is your A c, where A c and B c these are being measured from the center of the ellipse not from this point ok not from here, but rather from this point. So, as I have shown here A c and B c. So, therefore, now it becomes easy. So, this distance from the center this distance is A c and this distance is B c. So, immediately you can see what will be the coordinate of the your ground station. Okay. And thereafter, if above this you continue to a height h, okay. if you continue to height h and this phi and phi c they are connected together, this also we have to remember they are not independent of each other. So, if this is the height above this plane and this is here perpendicular. So, we need another this extra part this is delta B c to be added and this is delta A c to be added to get the coordinate. So, your it you may be on a hill like this you are sitting on a hill here in this position and the quantity here this is this quantity is delta h which is being measured from this point to this point. So, this is your delta h or simply h you say simply h this is the height. So, to get the final value what we need to do just add this h cos phi to get a c and here h sin phi to get b c. So, this is the then coordinate of the ground station at this point. So, this way then if you are measuring and say this is the Greenwich meridian and from there this you write as L 0 or the symbol perhaps I have used earlier lambda or I do not remember. So, maybe we can keep this as the latitude the uh, longitude as L 0. So, in the Greenwich meridian or in the ITRF with respect to the ITRF what we see that the coordinate then becomes A C cos L 0 and this is the x coordinate y coordinate becomes A c sin L 0 and z coordinate equal to B c which comes after adding this altitude. If h equal to 0 this gets reduced to the previous value. Okay, so, once uh, these things are known, okay. so we will not complicate and combine all the equations, so that uh, it looks very uh, clumsy, we will leave it like this, the, this is enough at this stage. Okay. 
However, once you combine, okay, so after combining, what you will look at that x can be written as g1 cos uh, cos phi. So that means this phi we can take it outside. Okay, g1 cos phi times cos l0. Similarly, y equal to g1 uh, cos phi times sin l0 and z equal to here also the sin phi sin phi can be taken outside. So, this becomes and we write here g2 uh, sin phi times uh, g2 simply g2 sin phi okay. where g1 equal to a divided by 1 minus so, this E is converted in terms of this. Okay. So, once you convert in terms of that, so it looks like this sin a square phi under root and plus h and g 2 is a times 1 minus f whole a square. sin a square phi this is under root and plus h. So, this is casted in a simple format. This exercise I have not done otherwise it will take a lot of time to combine all, all these things. Okay, now, we go to uh, this point again. So, this is your ground station and this is the row vector and from the center of the earth to this place this is the radius of the earth. Okay. So, let us say this is the r vector, this will be known to you this r vector uh, we go on the next page. For simplicity, I am not drawing the ellipsoid, rather showing it in a straightforward manner. So, let us say this is r, and from here you have this the row vector, and this is the r vector. So, this is in the topocentric frame, this is in the topocentric, topocentric means this is x t, y t and z t and this is o so, rotating along with the earth. So, then the rho in the topocentric frame this can be written as r t minus r and from where this is coming this is coming from r topocentric this equal to the whole rotation matrix the precession nutation the rotation and the polar motion that we have included. So, this times r s k phi. From here this is appearing. So, for that there is the topocentric coordinate we can write as y t and z t and minus r. So, the your coordinate on the ground this is your r this is forming r. If you just look on the surface of the earth Okay, so, this will get simplified h will get el eliminated, but if you are on a hill here as in this place it is a zone. So, at that time we have to take into account this particular part. Okay. So, this can be written as g 1 cos phi times uh, we have written cos l 0 minus g 1 uh, sin phi times uh, no, g 1 cos phi times g 1 cos phi times sin l 0 and z t we have written as g 2 times sin phi.
Okay. But the observation that we are doing, we are not doing in this frame, rather we are doing the observations in a frame which we have written as x t p, y t p and here z t p. The azimuth is azimuth is being measured along this direction. So, particularly down here, this is your azimuth, and then then this will be the elevation angle. So now, what we need to do that we need to transfer this rho t to rho t p. So rho t p this will be given by rotation from uh, topocentric to the uh, terrestrial to the topocentric frame. This is in the terrestrial frame. Okay, this is in the terrestrial frame. If I use word topocentric, then correct it. This is the terrestrial, terrestrial in terrestrial frame. So this is transfer from rotation from terrestrial to topocentric, and then we can write here rho terrestrial and this matrix how this is decided this is decided by your whatever the angles it is a given to you. So, you have to utilize all those angles. Okay. So, for getting this you need the geocentric uh, angle that means say we you are uh, if I take this and uh, this was your geodetic latitude this is the geocentric one. So, this you are writing as phi c. So, we have to write here in terms of the phi c. So, this angle is phi c or maybe we can write this for simplicity not carrying this c we can write in terms of beta. Okay. So, to go to this uh, green shown in green to this coordinate system what is required you need to rotate from here to here and come to this point. So, so such that your x t comes to this point. So, we will write this as the x t prime this gets parallel to this vector x t p and x t then becomes parallel. So, at that time you will see that z t p z t comes in the vertical direction and y will go on the opposite side here in this direction if we do this rotation. So, how much that rotation will be given by that will be given by r about the third axis by 90 degree plus beta or phi c where beta equal to phi c. So, this is the first rotation to be given and then you see if, uh, here this angle we have to decide. Okay. So, here if you are looking at this place this is the tangent if this angle is beta. So, this angle will be beta and this angle will be 90 minus beta. Okay. So, to coincide this y t direction with y t p then you need a rotation about x axis and that rotation is r 1. So, r 1 we can write here So, r 1 times r 1 about the x axis to be rotated by this angle or as it is shown here 90 minus beta. Then your this reference frame it coincides with this reference frame otherwise you do normal uh, taking the components and then breaking it up. So, th this is the total rotation which maps from T to T p terrestrial to topocentric reference frame and after multiplication. So, uh, this is rotation about the third axis and this is rotation about the first axis first axis and uh, one rotation we have given about the third axis. So, this parallel thing 
this T p is not located here at this point, it is located here, but I am just rotating it. So, that the components can be converted ok. Uh, and for this part uh, may be uh, I have worked in the satellite attitude dynamic control. So, there you can go and look how the matrix or uh, rotation is done or either you can refer to any book uh, on the Valado or uh, etcetera some matrix rotation is given. So, you can look into that also. So, from this place your uh, R T 2 T P this will be available and this matrix can be written as minus sin L 0 cos L 0 0 minus sin beta this is a very long topic which I am trying to compress and tell you in short it is a difficult task for me also. So, this is the transformation matrix and this way once you operate on this by if you operate on this here you write here x t y t and z t or uh, we have written rho t perhaps here uh, you will operate on this uh, rho t ok. So, from uh, this will be rho t rho y t and rho that way we have to write rho x t rho y t and rho z t. So, if you operate on this, so this will get converted into rho x t p rho y t p and rho z t p. So, this will get converted into the topocentric reference frame ok, where tan beta equal to tan phi c this is connected with phi as So, phi c I have replaced in terms of beta just so that I do not have to carry the subscript. Also rho magnitude in the terrestrial frame this will be equal to rho magnitude in the topocentric frame and this quantity is rho T x square plus rho T y square rho T z square under root rho T p x. Now, azimuth and elevation at in the topocentric frame that we have to decide. So, once we have done this, so we can draw the frame here. This is x t p, y t p, and z t p direction, okay. and here you have the rho t p or whatever rho t they, they are same in the magnitude this is azimuth angle and this is the elevation angle. So, we can immediately write azimuth equal to tan inverse y t p uh, azimuth angle will be uh, we are measuring azimuth from the x direction. So, we will have uh, y t p divided by ok. So, tan inverse we will write it clearly on the next page we go fifth. This is x t p y t p and z t p this is rho this quantity from here to here this is angle is azimuth and this angle is elevation and th this is the corresponding coordinate which will be shown here. So, this will be coordinate will be y t p 
and this coordinate will be x t p and this coordinate will be z t p. So, if I write azimuth here so tan azimuth angle this will be y t p divided by x t p and similarly, the tan elevation this will be z t p divided by x t p square plus y t p square under root. Few more things are required here. This is a simple differentiation. And this implies rho dot and the same thing can also be written in terms of topocentric components. So, range range rate it is available here. So, what we are trying to do that if we go and look back this is rho topocentric and this is r topocentric this this vector. So, from here this in the terrestrial frame then we get aware of this length the range. Okay. So, exactly what we are trying to do we are in the inertial frame the radius vector what this this r t this here it is shown to be in the terrestrial frame if it is given in the inertial frame. So, I have to first convert this into the terrestrial frame and from terrestrial I have to get to the rho rho dot azimuth and elevation. So, the steps we are following first, first what we do assume x tilde 0. Okay. and then propagate this state to n number of times. So, you will get here x 1 tilde x 2 tilde up to x n tilde and this is these are in the propagated in the inertial frame and this comes from the inertial navigation system. So, you have propagated. Now, each of them needs to be converted into the terrestrial frame. So, this is in inertial and then comes to terrestrial reference frame, terrestrial reference frame. So, you, you know the rotation matrix, the complete precession, nutation, rotation and the polar motion. So, do this R k 5 reduction, F k 5 reduction and you, then you are coming to the terrestrial reference frame. And similarly, the velocity part also can be reduced. The equation we have written where the r dot also appears. Okay. Once this is reduced to this, then this has to be reduced to the topocentric frame. And the topocentric what we are measuring? We are measuring rho, rho dot, azimuth and elevation. So, already I have shown you that once we get the quantities in the terrestrial frame. So, by multiplying with this with uh, this matrix you can terrestrial frame values can be converted into the this uh, topocentric frame. Okay. So, once you have converted here in topocentric frame and then the corresponding here the here x t p y t p and z t p they are nothing but rho x t p rho y t p and rho z t p. 
So, you can see by a series of uh, mathematical reduction, we are able to come to this point. Okay. And once these three are known, so immediately the azimuth angle and from here the elevation angle can be estimated and also together with this the rho dot can be estimated. What will be the rate of change of the this range? So, either you write it like this or the topocentric one both will come to the you will come to the same result because they are connected by the same equation. So, this way the observations you are able to get. So, one is y calculated okay. and another one you are directly observing user your instruments. So, those are y observed and then this is y calculated this gives you delta y tilde and this we I have written as the observation residual. Rest other things you need to work out. Now, this observation residual is directly related with delta x tilde 0. So, if this is known, so this can be estimated using the equations we have developed earlier, okay. the Jacobian matrix and then the observation matrix. Okay. So, delta y was connected like this delta uh, h times phi uh, times delta x tilde 0 times nu, it was connected like this and this we have this we have tried to minimize and get to delta x 0. So, this is the process to be followed, but uh, if you uh, this is the theoretical process and I will supply you the written material on this because this is the last lecture and after this I am not going to cover any more on this and uh, uh, you can say re refer to the lecture notes I will be supplying you. But in the actual practice what is done that I will show instead of calculating so much of matrices this is the earth okay, and uh, this is your say the actual orbit which is unknown actual orbit. Okay. Then you have one uh, say this is the assumed value x tilde 0 you are assuming here and using this then you get to the orbit. So, this is your we call as the nominal orbit. this we call as the nominal orbit. So, in calculating this matrix delta y tilde equal to do g by do x tilde times do x tilde by do x tilde 0 times delta x tilde 0 once we are writing the like this. So, instead of writing expanding like this we simply write as 0 times delta x tilde 0. and we are interested in finding this matrix which we have written as h. So, how do we find it? Then this in the nominal value we apply perturbation one by one. So, let us say this is x 0 1, x 0 1 there are a number of components of this. So, x 0 1 you have and I perturb it by some small delta x 0 1 only in the there are 6 components of this x 0 1, x 0 2, x 0 3, x dot 0 4, x dot 0 5 and x dot 0 6. These are corresponding to position and the velocity. So, do the perturbation in this. So, as a result say you are your orbit is appearing here in this place. So, as a result of this perturbation what will be the correspondence? So, propagate this orbit and after propagating you can calculate at different instant of time what will be the value of y calculated. So, this constitutes your nominal value. So, or this is called as a nominal orbit. Next once it is a perturbed and let us say this position is here 
and this orbit once you propagate using the state equation so this goes like this and then this we call as the perturbed orbit perturbed orbit i will show by another color this is your perturbed orbit so by perturbing by delta x0 1 here in x0 only in the first element you are doing the perturbation so you can calculate this quantity here so dou g by you need the first element here there are uh, g is of size 4 so dou g 1 by dou x1 dou g 1 by dou x2 dou g 1 by dou x3 dou g 1 by dou x4 and so on you have to do up to 6 similarly here dou g 2 by dou x1 and so on okay so if you are perturbing by perturbing in the first element only so you will be able to get this you will be able to get this you will be able to get this so up to here the four this four elements of the matrices will be determined next then you restore this back to x01 position okay so if, uh, again we come to the nominal value then next time we perturb the second element this one okay by delta x02 and then again we do the same propagation of the orbit calculate this quantities okay these are the partial derivatives so how much the y value will change delta y how much it's going to change so you just have to calculate this quantity by uh, calculating the difference how much difference it makes with the uh, this uh, perturbed value and the nominal orbit if you subtract them at that point and divide by this delta x0 so you directly get this quantity instead of doing all the mathematics it can be done numerically in a very lucid manner only thing that you need to propagate six times nominal orbit you will propagate, propagate only once but the perturbed orbit you have to propagate six times because every time you are giving perturbation in one of the elements here in one of the state variables okay so this way you will be able to complete this matrix once this is done so apply the method of uh, list squares that we have already discussed in the previous lecture this particular part and then your the correction in uh, delta x this will be known to you and uh, therefore your first iteration uh, after doing a number of iteration you will be able to determine the orbit so i think uh, uh, this is enough at this stage uh, because only one week was allotted to this and already we have covered for more than 10 lecture so we we'll stop here and uh, then next time onwards we will start with the trajectory transfer and whatever the handwritten material i am having so i will supply you later on thank you very much